Diddy in prison. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Prison, on the face of it, is naturally problematic for a narcissist. It will cause a reduction in the size of the fuel matrix. It is, of itself, an inherent threat to control. However, it may not necessarily prove to be the difficulty that you would think it would be. And if you'd like to understand more about how the narcissist and how specific narcissists deal with the question of prison, I would invite you to watch the following videos. If the Narcissist Goes to Prison, Part 1. If the Narcissist Goes to Prison, Part 2. Andrew Tate, How He Deals with Prison. Lucy Letby, How Will Prison Affect Her? Those videos will give you further insight into the impact of prison in general terms upon particular types of narcissist and with regard to specific ones. You need just search for those particular videos and you will find them amongst the many videos on my channel. But what about P. Diddy, Sean Combs? He has found himself currently detained at MDC Brooklyn. What's life like for him in prison at the current time? And what does that tell us about this particular narcissist? Well, information has been shared as to what the conditions currently are for PDD. It's suggested that his prison conditions are actually worse than those of Jeffrey Epstein, another narcissist who found himself in Chokey and then died, or more accurately, was offed. It would appear that Diddy is complaining about the food, and he's also complaining about being kept on lockdown. He will complain about the food, of course, because it isn't the usual standard that he was used to as being a wealthy man, which, of course, is a threat to control in terms of general consumption, but also his preconceived notion of his status. Being kept on lockdown is naturally a threat to the narcissist's control. Hitherto, P. Diddy was able to come and go as he pleased in his life. Now he cannot, and that restriction on his liberty is a substantial threat to control. It's apparently the case that he can't be placed in the general prison population. The likelihood is that he'll be killed if that were the case. That's because he's high profile and somebody would like to make a name for themselves by attacking him. It may also be, of course, in relation to things that he's accused of, that a peculiar kind of moral code is adopted by certain criminals, that they disapprove of the crimes that he's accused of and would see that it's appropriate to exact some form of punishment, some form of summary justice as against him. The threat to his person, of course, is also a threat to his control, and P. Diddy is somebody that would experience fear. Therefore, his narcissism would recognise that it would be appropriate for him to be kept apart from the general prison population. Although there might be some bravado in his part to suggest that he isn't scared, the fact is that he would be, given the fact that there are threats to his person and to his life. There was a possibility that he would be placed in the same unit as R. Kelly and other high-profile inmates, but Epstein wasn't housed there, and apparently he's been placed in what's known as the SHU, the Special Housing Unit, which is also known as the Hole, a place that is a punishment for prisoners who get into fights. He will not appreciate being categorised in that way, because, quite simply, that flies in the face of the status that he has. What are conditions like in the special housing unit? Well, it's a small windowless room, which is less than 10 by 10 feet in size. He doesn't have any books, he doesn't have any television, and he has minimal privileges. All of that makes for a rather miserable existence for someone who's a multimillionaire, who's used to living in extravagant housing and would be able to watch whatever he wanted whenever he chose to do so. The fact that he now has no access to television or books and minimal privileges and is basically in a very small cell amounts to massive threat to his control. 
It also means that the level of fuel that he receives is reduced, which will have a general impact upon his confidence levels, his level of bravado, his level of coping. It's rumoured that the guards are tampering with his food, which is leading him to stop eating, not because of the quality, but out of fear that it's been contaminated. Apparently, he has stopped eating because he doesn't want to risk consuming food that may have been laced with human feces. Apparently, the guards are taunting him, claiming that they've tampered with his meals, demonstrating the paranoia of the narcissist, although, of course, it may be accurate that there has been some tampering. The taunting that takes place is naturally a threat to control. It's a challenge fuel. He's receiving fuel from the guards, who are non-intimate tertiary sources, but the suggestion that his food has been tampered with is a threat to control, and therefore he seeks to nullify that threat by not eating. All of his calls are being monitored on orders from the prosecutors, something he may be aware of. Notorious inmates like El Chapo was not subjected to conditions that the ones that P. Diddy is experiencing. Chapo had access to a laptop, to a phone, to legal visits, and he could choose between a television or an exercise bike. He was also allowed to see his wife. P. Diddy doesn't receive any of these privileges, which, of course, slaps him in the face with regard to status and, again, further threats to control. His attorneys requested a transfer for him, but that was denied. Another threat to control. He's alone in his cell. He doesn't even have a cellmate. Epstein did at least have somebody sharing the space with him, which, of course, would be a non-intimate secondary source, unless, of course, they're engaging in some sexual activity. Gay for the stay, as can often be the case. But Diddy hasn't got anybody, which again reduces the further provision of fuel. The guards are mocking him, walking by his cell singing Bad Boy for Life, and they're referencing his songs about being locked out. They apparently sing his greatest hits and taunt him with, I thought you were a bad boy man. Now all of this, of course, provides him with fuel because they are directing these taunts towards him, but it's challenge fuel. It amounts to a threat to his control. He can't attack the guards to shut them up because they're physically separate from him. He doesn't have anybody that he can turn to to say what a bunch of wankers they are. Why? Because he doesn't have a cellmate. All he can do is basically tell himself that they're arseholes, that he's superior to them, and try and stay in a position of withdrawal. But it's difficult, because as they keep going by and taunting him, it's not like he can actually physically withdraw. He might sit and put his hands over his ears. He might remind himself of how he's superior to them. But these repeated threats to control are going to prove problematic to him. They're going to chip away at him whilst they're providing him with fuel they are continuing to threaten his need for control. Apparently, adding insult to injury, they're singing Akon's Locked Up under the mistaken belief that it's P. Diddy's track and he's sleeping on a concrete floor with a thin two-inch mattress surrounded by rodents, which, again, is a fall from grace with regard to the level of luxury that he's once enjoyed. The guards are apparently aren't starstruck by a celebrity but rather, the rumours are that they're enjoying tormenting him because of it. Now, all of this treatment, whereby he's still receiving fuel, albeit at not the same level as he once did, that he suffered a particular diminution in the standard of his surroundings, and that he's repeatedly being challenged in circumstances where it's very difficult for him to assert control, leads to one potential outcome. He needs to find a way to make it stop. There are two clear options that are available. The first, if he's able to do so, is to kill himself. That would be the ultimate assertion of control over the world at large. As I've explained in my video, the narcissist and suicide, most narcissists don't commit suicide because the narcissism wants to keep the narcissist alive. But if his fuel levels are dropping, that they start to take him into a fuel crisis, and he's repeatedly having his control threatened and he's struggling to find a way to nullify that threat to control, it's a possibility that ultimately his narcissism would lead him down that route as a means, if he's able to achieve it, to nullify the threats to control. The alternative, and this is the one that seems more likely, is that he will want to sing. I don't mean his greatest hits, but rather that he will sing in order to try and curry favour 
to cut a deal to find himself released by giving information about other people. And, of course, such circumstances then will be utilised to indirectly assert control over those that have been tormenting him by the provision of this information. Thus, these are the rumoured conditions for PDD in prison which give you insight into how the narcissist deals with that prison situation and also where it might lead to in relation to this particular incarcerated individual. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.